Hey, Shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, great millstone, that rule well through the scriptures, peace to hope for elect. All right, uh, this lesson I came across some more history regarding um, how Edomites, so-called white people, converted to the uh, the belief and the doctrine of the Israelites. And the Israelites are the uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today. You know, so those people that's uh, so-called practicing Judaism and as we know it in the land of Israel today and claiming that they're the children of God, well, there's history on to how that came to be. All right, because it wasn't always so. Um, Helena of Adiabene, right? It says, was an Ashkenazi slash Riphatane queen of Adiabene. So that's where her, her lineage came from. All right. It says, uh, modern day Erbil, Iraqi Kurdistan, and Edessa, modern day Urfa, Turkey, as the sister wife of Monobaz I, and later the chief wife of Abgar V, king of uh, Oshorn. See, that's not no Israelite, uh, we don't, that's not an Israelite custom. You don't marry your sister, you know. It says, uh, she was the mother of Izatis II and Monobaz II. Helena became a convert to Judaism about the year 30 CE. According to Josephus, Helena was the daughter of King Izatis, and according to both Josephus and Moses of Korin, she was the chief wife of Abgar V, King of Odessa. All right. It says, uh, what is known of Helena is based on the writings of Flavius Josephus, Moses of Korine, Kyrikos, Ganjakit, Ganjakit, and the Talmud. So there's multiple sources, there's multiple historians that credit the life of this uh, Edomite woman that converted to uh, the doctrine of the Israelites. Because that's, that's, that's how you get the term Jew-ish, you know, the suffix-ish, meaning like or as, but not exactly. Like if you tell someone... Uh, you tell a little girl she's acting boyish, that doesn't mean she's a boy. That means she's resembling the actions of a boy. Okay? It says, uh, Josephus, although younger, was almost contemporary with Helena, living in Jerusalem at the time when she lived and was buried there. And he wrote substantial parts of this work from firsthand knowledge. The earliest parts of the Talmud, while based on older sources, were compiled and redacted from around the year 200. All right, but this is how I was led to this knowledge. It says, uh, Helena of Adiabene was noted for her generosity. During a famine at Jerusalem in 45 to 46 CE, she sent to Alexandria for corn, grain, and to Cyprus for dry figs for distribution among the sufferers from the famine. Now, this happened around the time of See, the Bible is the history book, all right? This happened around this time, Acts 11 and 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world. That's the famine, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. And when you, um, when you put this up against uh, secular sources, there is a, 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 a number of sources that agree with that. And around this time, 45 to 46 CE, Claudius Caesar was ruling, and that's when uh, the dearth was, or, or the famine, all right? And Helena of Adia being, what, noted for her generosity, right? During the famine, she was, what, distributing food, you know, dry figs, corn, grain to the people, but, but that don't mean nothing. You, you, you still not an Israelite, all right? This is uh, Salakia. see this is uh job 20 and 10 it says uh his children shall seek to please the poor and his hands shall restore their goods right just because you're nice and just because you want to you know call yourself giving something back like sometimes we'll be teaching on the camp and you know edomites might come up and offer the biased pizza and offer the you know because that'll be they uh they little good deed for the day you know That'd be they little, uh, they little uh, token of goodwill to wash off some of that filthy evilness. But nevertheless, 
the scriptures the scripture is written how it's written. Regardless of what you do, your fate is sealed. All right. This is a <clears throat> revelation. All right. Two and nine. It says, "I know thy works in tribulation and poverty." Right. So the Israelites, for the most part, would be in a lower state. All right. It says, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Like, that's total blasphemy for them people to call themselves the children of the Lord. They are not the children of the Lord. They are uh, an abomination, all right? The scripture says he will have war with Amalek forever. Let me see. This is... Uh, Numbers. Uh, oh, Exodus. Exodus 17 and 16. It says, For he said, Because Yahweh have sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So there will always be war. With Amalek, and it just so happened, and Amalek is the the is the whom are called the Jewish people today. All right, it just so happened that when we went into slavery, we lost all uh, knowledge. All right, through them beating out our heritage, beating out our language, beating out our customs, and while they was warring with us, we didn't know we was at war with them. All right, let me get this scripture. You know, uh, war on all levels. Ecclesiastes 30 and, 30, 30 and 3. Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. It says, he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice with him. See, we weren't taught about our fathers. You got to be taught who the enemy is. You got to be taught how to play his game. You know, you got to be taught how to maneuver in, you know, in this web of deceits. But, you know, through the spirit of the Lord uh, and the, the apostles and the elders and the men on down, you know, that's getting restored. We we getting back to our um our old righteous ways and we you know, getting back to the understanding. But while we was uh asleep, meaning not aware of what was going on, Amalek was still warring on us. All right. Still still poisoning our foods, you know, still uh poisoning the soil where we live at. Redlining, uh 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 ed the education system, not really teaching you anything, you know. Just every, just just any and everything, man. Just any various ways to destroy our people. All right, but back in uh, Revelation two and nine, it says, uh, "I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan." Right. Synagogue. Let's look at what synagogue mean. Synagogue. Maybe I ain't spell it right. I want to get. I want it because I believe it means chief house. I thought. Wait a minute. G O G U E. Okay. G U E. Let's see, synagogue. Chief house, keep that in mind, okay? In the Greek, in the Greek synagogue, they bring it together, gathering as a proof, contracting. In the, uh, in the New Testament, assembly of men, assembly of Jews, formerly the buildings, those were Jews, congregation, assembly. Okay, we can, we can leave it at that. That's fine. All right. So to all the races, all the nations on earth that, you know, lie in wickedness, because the Israelites are the only one that got the true God and the true uh, services to please God. Everything else is idols and wickedness. So to all these other nations, okay, and even within the Edomite nations, your various factors, you know, white people, you know, try to distinguish themselves from each other. But you're all Edomites, you know, from the, the from the Germans to to the British 
to the Jewish, to the Americans, to the Australians, to the Russians, the Scandinavians. You're all Edomites, just various, you know, different uh, categories of Edomites. But out of all of them, the chief house of wickedness is Amalek, the so-called Jewish people. And let's see, let's see. Let's look at their highest, um, oh, they're not going, um, my internet running, running slow, Slakia. But this is their highest uh, uh, authority right here, the Talmud. As much as they scream about the Tanakh or whatever, when they're speaking about the Tanakh, they're actually speaking about the Talmud, okay? Because in, in Jewish Babylonian literature, the 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 uh Talmud is the proper interpretation of the uh the Tanakh or the Torah. All right. Known as the first five books of Moses. So let's see some of the quotes in in the Talmud. Okay. The synagogue of Satan. And this is also a good video is to watch. Everybody this is one, focused um, with simultaneous. Sorry, uh, this one's sick, evil Jewish Talmud. Exposing the evil Jewish Talmud. What the babies, what the Jews, yeah, you know. Islam's sinister creed, but forgetting to unmask. Similar diabolical misleading stuff. Why to even bother doing so, you may ask. Because there is a need to show the wickedness of those doctrines to prevent their deceptive influence and to get souls saved from hell and right now we are exposing the oral law of the pharisees as known as the talmud this article should be considered as the first and hardest of all steps towards the goal as they say which is to debunk the false talmud shows at least and it ones and it ones instead here read it yourselves I can't really see that. But I'll just click on this one. This one, I never saw that one before. I was hoping, because it was only a minute and some change, it, uh, you know, hit home on a point. Yeah, my internet don't want to load, but, you know, anybody come across this video, you can go to the, uh, you know, the sick. Matter of fact, I'll just put it, put it in the description box so you can see, you know, if I put that up, they might flag the video and take it down anyway. Hold on. Look like it want to load. Well, you know, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying less to the hopeful elect. All praise is glory and honor unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash Shalom and Ababa.